On August 9th, 1945, the atomic weapon Fat Man is detonated over Nagasaki, killing 20 to 40,000 people, many of whom died within seconds of the detonation, in the second and hopefully final use of an atomic weapon in the wartime. The two uses of atomic weapons started in the age of Adam, the race to build bigger, better, and just a lot more weapons, creating a war that would never happen, technology that would never be used, but where did it all begin? How did we get to the disastrous weapon known as Fat Man? The atomic bomb began where all projects start, the idea and testing phase. Today we'll be looking at the testing phase of one of the weapon's designs through the scattering of artifacts that remain. Join me as I visit a beautifully contaminated site with a history that changed the world. Located in Bayo Canyon, about three miles east of the town of Los Alamos, exists the remnants of Technical Site 10. It's not the most accessible place in the world. There are two options to enter the site. You can use the back road to access. This is a dirt road with a gate. I would not recommend this way as sometimes the gate is locked, other times it's not. The second way, the way that I chose, was to hike in. This is actually a great hike. It's quite beautiful and a must see on a trip to Los Alamos, even if you're not looking for nuclear artifacts. The trailhead to TA-10 is around 2.6 miles, a leisurely hike for anyone. As we hike in, let's go over the history of Technical Site 10 and what the purpose was. The site began operating on September 1940 and continued until March of 1962. Over its 18 years of operation, 254 tests were held in the process of designing the implosion type nuclear weapon. The site was crucial for designing the plutonium device, and the tests here have been called the most important in the design of the plutonium weapon. The task was simple, but execution was far from trivial. Compression of plutonium into a critical mass needed for nuclear detonations. Scientists believed that they could use a combination of shock waves from precise explosives to reach the critical mass, and got to work. Tests were set up to measure the gamma absorption of metal spheres under compression of high explosives. These high explosives were called explosives lens, explosive charges with highly specific and precise shapes. Each test used 100 to 1,000 curies of radial anthonym, which to put that in perspective, one banana is around 0.511 nanocuries. One curie is 1 billion nanocuries, which means a 100 curie test would be equal to 195,694,716,243 bananas. The average banana weighs 120 grams, and converting these numbers over, we get 23,483,365,949.2 kilograms of bananas in total. That's over 85% of India's production of 27,632,845,000 180 kilograms in a year. Metals were also substitutes for plutonium's mechanical properties. Depleted uranium was tried, but not give the wanted results as it absorbed too much gamma. They also tried experimenting with iron, copper, and cadmium. Cadmium ended up being the most used in the tests. Now, the 1940s through the 1960s are not known for their stellar safety record. The radial anthonine tests were not the most future-minded tests in the world. Mostly all of them were just open-air dirty bomb tests using hundreds of curies of highly radioactive material for each test, spreading it all over the site and into the air, which had drifted out of the testing area. Take this as you want. Was it needed? Was it not? Was it necessary to develop the plutonium weapon? was a necessary evil to save lives. The detonations also spread parts of the test device. Government cleanups have occurred to try to remove contamination, although plenty of parts can still be found today.
Now that we are at the site, we can start looking for parts. It's not hard to find bits and pieces, large and small strewn about the place, where explosive tests took place. Let's look around and see what we can find. It's helpful to look in the areas where the test firings for best results, but parts can be found all over as they were flown far and wide due to the explosives used. The amount of artifacts left over from the 200 plus tests is an insane amount. You can find, just by walking a small distance, hundreds of small fragments from the detonation. You can even find large pieces of wire, large pieces of control panels, connectors. You name it, if it was on the test, you can still find it here today. I didn't even record all the clips of finding materials. If I did, this video would be an hour long just picking up random bits and pieces of metal, wire, plastic. It's quite fascinating because you can see the bentness of the metals and you can tell that they've been in a high energetic explosion. It's a beautiful area and a very fun activity to look for parts. And you're cleaning up the environment. Just watch out for any radioactive contamination. Here I have an overview picture of all the materials that I found. I separated them into piles according to what they were and what they were similar to. Let's go in and take a deeper look at the materials. Our iron is quite rusted and misshapen due to the explosions. It's quite fascinating to see how violent these explosions are. There are some thin materials which I think are pieces of can. And of course we have a couple nails from the wooden structures. And this is the can part that I was talking about previously. Next up to our misc pile. So this is a piece of cork. And then we have some kind of gear cog type system. A bunch of holes drilled in it made out of plastic, a piece of mirror, more pieces of mirror. I found a couple of them and I don't know what the purposes are. Then we have some glass panels and some yellowed plastic. There's a couple pieces of cork that I found. I don't know what this goes along with, and then this is a graphite rod, a tarp holder of some kind to the corner of it. Then we have our lead pile, which is quite dense material, and it's very easy to identify that it's a lead. Then we have a material that I have not yet identified, but you can see that there's casting marks on it, and you can see that it was blown apart, so it's some kind of brittle material. And our copper, which has nice oxides, you can see here that there's a lip on it. And there's a whole bunch of copper material. And another pile of cadmium type material. As I said before, you can really tell that this is all in energetic types of detonation. This more brittle material I really don't know what it is because how brittle it acted, unlike the cadmium, which was more bendy. And I found a couple large pieces like this. Then we have our burnt rubbery type material. I don't know if it's due to the detonations that caused it to be this t this deformed and this melted, but it could just be due to age. Then we have a piece of rock here with asphalt with wires protruding through it. And we have our piles of connectors. These connectors are quite smushed and deformed, but it's cool to see that they still, some of them exist in relatively intact states. Here we have some kind of connector, and there is a couple capacitors and some electrical tape that must have been wrapped around some wire.
then this is one of the large connector panels that I found which still has a lot of the interfaces on it and misshapen wire pile some of this still has insulation on it others are just bare copper wire And that's everything I found. Now, there was some radioactive contamination, although there weren't that many parts that I found high levels of radiation. There were a few, but only two really stand out. The first one being this metal plate, which I still haven't figured out what type of material it is. I'm thinking it's some kind of cast cadmium but it does have some radioactivity when I bring the probe to it. The most radioactive thing I found was this piece of lead. Now my theory with this is that when the detonation happened, the lead got wrapped around the material, protecting it and keeping it in so it didn't wash away from any rain or wind, preserving it until I found it. Now, I'm thinking it's depleted uranium inside of it, or natural uranium. I'm pretty sure it's uranium due to it being a common used material for the tests. I could do a gamma analysis of it, but I don't have that equipment at this time. I plan to in the future and I will update when I do so. Thank you for watching to the end. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section below. But I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. So my cad, I bought me a Jeep. I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.